It's an interesting thing that a lot has been written about and said about uh, Hammond and Claremont as individuals, but little has been made in terms of their comparisons between the two. Um, and when you look at the parallels, they're quite interesting. Hammond was born in 1947, Claremont in 1949. They both went to Islam um, in Christchurch, and uh, Hammond finished in 1969, uh, Claremont in 1970. So they were there at the same time, they had the same teachers. They were part of the same sort of cultural zeitgeist of that kind of um, 60s, 70s, so they would have been influenced by things like protests against the Vietnam War. And I think it's really interesting to look at them together because you sort of see these two really masterful painters who are both widely celebrated in the New Zealand art scene. I think there are kind of interesting differences in the way they make paintings as well. You know, like uh, Claremont is really held up as, as New Zealand's sort of leading example of expressionist painting. Um, and so you see these kind of very gestural marks in the paint. Um, they are sort of pictorial or representational paintings still. So they have a sort of a subject matter, which is you know, figures or tables or objects or in sort of interiors. Um, but the, the way the paint has worked is very kind of very expressive and, and energetic. In the case of Hammond, you do see there's much more sort of precision and control in the in the brush strokes that he makes. It doesn't have that quite that same expressive flair. Um, but there is something very um, remarkable and free about the way he paints at the same time. I think both artists there is something quite anarchic about the way they use paint. So in, in Claremont, there's these sort of very gestural paint marks and sort of splatters and sort of energy. With Hammond it's more to do with kind of paint runs that sort of run down the surface of the, of the canvas. So they, they bring this sort of quite anarchic quality to the work of both artists.